we have related time uh, you guys today to hear this presentation because he alluded and discussed alluded to and discussed the transportation development credits or TDCs, um, as I may refer to them several times already today. Uh, but I wanted to give you a brief update on transportation development credits within our region, what we've done so far since uh, we started presenting these to you last, late last year, and uh, also a brief on a partnership that we were working on with TechSot that Dan mentioned earlier related to the $10 million revolver fund. Uh, with that, I'll start out with just a little bit of background about what are these TDCs. Uh, as I mentioned, it stands for Transportation Development Credits. Uh, they are earned by the region when we um, toll, use toll revenues on capital projects on the state highway system and the federal highway system. So uh, we're tr the federal government essentially tries to give us some credit back for our efforts in that regard. Uh, currently, we have 465 million credits available. Um, it is important to note that these credits are that. They are not cash. They are not real dollars that we can spend. You can't bring them to um, a transportation provider and cash them in, so to speak. But it does allow us to offset the local match requirements that our federal partners have. Uh, the federal government requires, for the most part, that if you're going to use their funds, they'll give you up to 80, in rare cases, 90% of the project costs, and you have to come up with a difference. When you use these credits, you can offset that difference and just use the 80% um, that they give you. Uh, this is a little bit of history, um, or maybe no information if you haven't seen it before, but our region has uh, divided up the transportation development credits into five major um, categories, so you see those here. The first one is strategic awards to small transit providers. We allocated about 5 million credits for that purpose. The second is what we call a type one call. This is a call for projects in which, in which the Regional Transportation Council, which is our policy board, um, has the revenue available and are making a, an option available for local agencies to use the credits um, in lieu of a cash match. Uh, so we have two initiatives that have occurred. One is the Transportation Alternatives Program that's actually ongoing right now. Uh, those projects, uh, project requests have come in and our bicycle pedestrian team is actively reviewing those so you should see that information at future public meetings. Uh, the second is one that actually was uh, discussed in Chris's presentation. Uh, the program in which the Regional Transportation Council actually approved all the projects that would offset the environmental speed limit changes resulted in use of 7.6 million of these credits. So when we went in and uh, provided money for TxDOT to do some of that signal work and the um, intelligent transportation systems or the cameras and such that are along the side of the road that help us uh, forecast and manage traffic better, all of those things we identified these credits for use instead of the state having to provide a match. Um, item three or category three, this is what we call a type two call for projects. We actually went out to public meeting last month on our type two call and we we're proposing um, of the 50 million in credits, you'll see um, a portion of that was submitted to us. And the type four is um, selling or transferring TDCs to other metropolitan areas or to the state. And I will address that uh, specific category in more detail towards the end of the presentation. Uh, that is, the, once again, that revolver uh, that Dan Kessler mentioned in his presentation as well. And then finally, um, regional programs and management operations programs are also um, important and they have uh, 10 million credits available. If we were to actually use all the credits that we set aside here in the amount we stated that that would leave us a balance of 250 million credits for future use as well. Uh, so where are we on each of these particular programs? Um, under the category of the small transit providers, uh, we have allocated in 2013 approximately 1.7 million credits. Uh, this year so far we've allocated about 200,000 credits and we anticipate uh, allocating more of those before the end of the year, probably getting close to the 5 million credits that are available. In the Type 1 call, I mentioned that that Transportation Alternatives Program is underway. Uh, it looks like they may not use all of the credits that are set aside for that purpose, but they do still have them available, so we'll uh, keep you posted on those uh, credits at future meetings. And in the um, effort that Chris referred to, um, we used 7.6 million of credits for those air quality projects. Uh, in the Type 2 call, this is the one where the local agency has revenue and they are asking us for credits to offset the local match requirement. 
Uh, we are proposing to award um, 16.76 million of credits. So of the 50 million that was available, only, well, just under 17 million will be used. Um, and we anticipate um, asking the Regional Transportation Council to approve that effort this August um, as well. Uh, the next category is selling TDCs or the credits to TxDOT and other areas. I'm going to cover that in a little bit more detail in a minute, but we did initiate that process earlier this year. Uh, and as I say here, it's the subject of today's presentation. And then finally, um, in the regional program section, we have awarded approximately 5.2 million credits earlier this year. Uh, we anticipate awarding some additional credits later this year. Uh, basically, we'll go through an effort to um, review those same programs. So an example would be the regional van pool program or employer trip reduction programs, some of our other air quality and congestion management programs. Uh, a lot of those, if we do not provide additional funds, uh, the funding will run out um, in 2015 or 2016. Our current funding document goes through 2018, so we're going to sit down and review um, how far out those should be extended, and then that may result in some additional credits uh, being used. Uh, so how does this compare? If you look at, on the left-hand side of this table, it shows you uh, the first slide, or one of the first slides I showed you that showed how much money was available, excuse me, how many credits were available under each of these categories. On the final right-hand side, uh, the final column there, you can see how does, it, how does the amount available compare to the amount we've awarded to date. If you sum all of these up, uh, we're, we come to about 130 uh, million credits already used, so that leaves still 330 million credits available, uh, which is slightly more than the 250 that we originally thought would be available at this point in time. So we're doing uh, pretty well at awarding them, and we'll have some carryover for future years. Let's see. So to provide that extra detail that I... I went too fast, sorry, uh, that I mentioned to you about um, selling or transferring these TDCs to TxDOT and other MPOs. Um, we think at this time, uh, well, the RTC originally um, authorized us to start negotiating this point uh, with the other metropolitan areas and with TxDOT um, earlier this year, excuse me, late last year. They allocated $50 million to discuss with MPOs, those are metropolitan planning organizations, and $100 million to work out with TxDOT. Um, based on our conversation with the Metropolitan Planning Organizations, it looks like that effort may or may not um, uh, move ahead, but we are moving ahead with the $100 million, uh, uh, 100 million credit um, for trade for real cash with TxDOT. Uh, so we began working with TxDOT in February. It culminated with action through TxDOT's um, Texas Transportation Commission, that's their uh, policy board, and they approved a transfer where we would hand over 100 million credits to the state that they could use on their own projects. And in return, they will give us sort of cents on the dollar, so to speak, of real cash that we can use for the revolver fund that Dan Kessler mentioned. So this is where uh, we may be interested in implementing uh, regional congestion and air quality programs. The federal government and the state require us to pay those programs up front before we are then reimbursed. Uh, because we are not a taxing entity, we do not have any way to um, collect funds to then pay first. So this will give us a revolving fund where we can pay the bill, get reimbursed by the state, pay the next bill, get reimbursed by the state, and so on and so forth. It creates a perpetual cycle for us um, in that regard. Uh, we, do, we did brief the Regional Transportation Council in July on this proposal. Uh, we will be going back to them in August to see um, if they would uh, really to request their approval to move forward, and that's what we are uh, basically out here to talk to you about today. So we wanted to, one, give you a status report on the other categories, and two, uh, see if you had any comments on the proposal of this partnership that we have with TxDOT. Uh, so with that, uh, here's my contact information, and we'll be taking questions, I believe, at the end.